A hammer is a hammer. You can use it to either build something or to destroy something. And that's what I think about social media. It's just a tool. You can either leverage that tool to make yourself happier, more productive, more inspired, or you can leverage it in the wrong way and just and end up feeling very drained after you use it. It's basically all about intention. I work in marketing, so it's pretty much impossible for me to cut social media out of my life. So I decided to make some changes to make social media work for me rather than the other way around. Of course, there's a lot of things about social media that are are not good for you at all. Studies have found that it's contributed a lot to declining mental health, reduced ability to focus, and the sentiment that it's just something that we need to cut. Social media can be addicting and distracting. That's just a fact. That's how the apps are designed. Like they're designed to keep you hooked onto them. If you want to improve your focus, you need to cut social media for sure. Also, social media can make you compare your life to that of others. And where it gets tricky is that you tend to compare your entire life, even the boring parts, even the not so nice parts, with just the highlight reel of other people's lives. So it's an impossible comparison and there's no other way out of it other than to just feel bad about yourself. On the same line of thinking, social media gives you the fear of missing out. By always looking at what other people are doing at any given point of time, you can start to feel as if what you're doing right now is not enough and you should be doing something else, something better, something more exciting. And you're constantly comparing. It becomes much harder to spend a Friday evening alone, chilled out at home, when you're looking on Instagram to see like everyone else is partying and doing different things outside. But there are a lot of positive aspects about social media as well. Firstly, making friends. I've been able to make a lot of friends, like real life friends in person on Instagram and LinkedIn. In one of my previous videos, I spoke about networking. And basically a lot of times through social media, what happens is that people either reach out to me or I reach out to them. And then we talk a little bit, we make plans to meet in person, and then we end up becoming friends. The second part is remaining connected with friends and family. As an expat living abroad, social media is a great way for me to remain connected with friends and family, not just back home, but all over the world. Because having gone to schools like Manipal and SEC Paris, I have friends that are living everywhere. And it's great to be able to remain in touch with them and see what they're up to. Thirdly, getting opportunities. Through social media, especially LinkedIn, which, I mean, it can be considered professional media, but it's pretty much social media, right? I've been able to get so many opportunities and particularly work opportunities. This happens because when I share my work online or when other people share my work online and then people comment on it, people share it, it, it just puts me in front of more eyes more people know what I do and what I can do. And that basically increases the chances that somebody will think that I'm gonna be useful for them and then they reach out to me to make a connection. The next big thing about social media has been building a community. I've been able to build this community on YouTube and Instagram. That's been huge for my life. And that would have been impossible without these platforms. Like I would have to get a TV deal or something. But now through social media, I can just share my work on my own and you guys can also just find it on your own. It's never been easier to publish yourself than it is now with social media. And lastly, social media has helped me get inspiration. Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. I've been on these platforms for years and years and years now. In fact, I first got the inspiration to start producing music after looking at different musicians and music producers who were doing things in their bedrooms when I was at the age of 16. When I saw that it was possible for them, it gave me the idea that it's possible for me too and that's how I got started with it. I got the inspiration to get into making travel videos at the age of 19 after looking at creators like Casey Neistat, Ben Brown and Jack and Finn Harris on YouTube. If I wasn't watching YouTube, I probably would have never got into these things. For photography, Instagram contributed in a huge way. By consuming content from other photographers that they post on Instagram, I'm more and more inspired to create better and better and more interesting content myself too. As a creative person, it's never been easier to be inspired by other creators. Instagram is basically like an art gallery or a photography gallery in your pocket. Now that you know the not so good parts of social media and the good parts of social media, how can we reduce the not so good parts and increase the good parts of social media for ourselves? There's a way of doing this and I can sum it up in one word and that is intention. You need to be intentional in the way that you use social media. Most of us use it by default, which is we just use it as it feels. We just use it the way it feels natural to use it. We follow our friends, we, we pick it up when we're bored. But let's now look at how I use social media more intentionally. The first thing I did was that I split up my Instagram accounts. I found that most of my negative social media experiences, like the fear of missing out and comparing myself, came from seeing what my personal connections were up to on a day to day by looking at their stories and their posts. I could just unfollow all of my personal connections on Instagram, but I do think that there's value in looking at what my friends are up to from time to time. I actually even spoke about 
about this in my previous video on networking. And so what I did was that even before I built this community on YouTube, I decided to split up my Instagram accounts into a personal one and an artistic one. On my personal account, I only follow personal connections. That's people who I've met at least once in person or I've had extended conversations with them. And on my artistic one, which is a public Instagram, I follow artists, photographers, other creators, influencers that inspire me. Basically everyone that I feel great to look at and I feel inspired by looking at. But I don't follow personal connections on there. So now I can choose specifically which Instagram account I want to look at. So for me, it was not just a way of controlling who can follow me and look at what I'm up to, but more a way for me to control what's on my feed. And I can choose specifically when I want to see what my personal connections are up to and when I just want to cut that entire bit out of my feed and only look at things that inspire me. I'm able to get a lot of inspiration as a content creator by looking at other content creators on Instagram and that helps me a lot in my work as a marketer as well. And this has worked out extremely well for me. Most days I actually don't look at my personal Instagram so I don't see what my friends are up to. I just check it once in a few days when I'm a bit curious. And the content that I see on my artistic or on my public Instagram, it leaves me feeling very inspired after I look at it. So this way I have the best of both worlds. The second way is to curate my feed. Even before I split up my accounts, another thing that I did was that I took a good hard look at all of the people that I was following and then I went full Mary Kondo on it. I unfollowed everyone that was not inspiring me or that didn't leave me feeling happy after I looked at their posts. A lot of times we end up following people who we think are cool in that moment but then over time their content just leaves us feeling a bit drained and most often we don't realize it or even if we do realize it we just ignore it so even now every now and then i go through all of my following list and then i just cull it like I, un I unfollow everyone that doesn't really give me that much inspiration. I've been doing this on Instagram, but I also do this especially on LinkedIn. It may seem a little crazy, but my rule on LinkedIn is that if someone posts even once something that I find a bit annoying or not very valuable, or even if they like a post or comment on a post and that makes it appear in my newsfeed, like a post that I don't really find any value from, I either unconnect from them or I just unfollow them in my newsfeed if I don't want to unconnect from them. And this way now I have a very well curated feed on LinkedIn that shows me posts that give me a lot of value professionally and that are relevant to the platform. Because a lot of times on LinkedIn, people post things that are not really relevant to be there on LinkedIn. They're either too personal or they're extremely opinionated on matters that are not really related to business and work because that's what I use LinkedIn for. And that's what I'm trying to do with LinkedIn. Honestly, by curating your social media feeds alone, your experience improves tremendously. Over the years, we end up creating a lot of clutter on our social media because we follow people that we actually don't need to follow or we follow people who end up becoming toxic afterwards. Or maybe we just grow and we don't resonate with their content anymore. It's good to periodically assess who you're following and then trim the bushes. The last one is be intentional while posting. The previous two points were mostly about consuming content. There's also a part on social media where you're the creator, you're the one who posts. Oftentimes, we just post without thinking. We just post what we feel like. It's especially important for me as a creator now, but even before, even just with friends, I started to be more intentional about what I'm posting online. Every single thing I post online, whether that's a status update, an Instagram post, an Instagram story, or a reel, or even a comment, I always try to pause and ask myself, okay, wait, why am I posting this? What's my objective and I try and make sure that whether the reason is good or not at least I know the reason why I'm posting something. Am I posting this story so that I appear cool in front of everyone? Give off a certain image of myself? Am I standing for something that I believe in? Or am I just sharing something that I find aesthetic and that means that I'm trying to share my sense of aesthetic? Sharing a certain part of myself? Or is it just to update people on things? Showing off? Just helping people? Selflessly? Or is it because I'm feeling lonely and I just want the attention and the validation? There could be a variety of reasons why you're posting something online. And so for me, I try to be as clear as possible about why I'm posting something. And that teaches me a lot about myself as well. And I think that without checking in with your intentions, it's really easy to just fall into toxic behavior and then burn out on social media after a point. And to be honest, there have been times in the past where I've kind of burnt out of Instagram and social media in general, where I just feel completely done with it. And then I usually need to take like a break on social media and then I come back to it when I'm feeling more comfortable. And that's okay too. All right, that brings us to the end of this video. So I hope that through this video, you're able to get an insight on how I personally use social media and all of the things that go through my mind when I'm using it. A hammer is a hammer. You can use it to either build something or to destroy something. And that 
that's what I think about social media. It's just a tool. You can either leverage that tool to make yourself happier, more productive, more inspired, or you can leverage it in the wrong way and just and end up feeling very drained after you use it. It's basically all about intention. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments down below how you use social media and if you have any other tips that help you feel better about using social media. All right, see you guys in the next one.